Hello, hello, hello. Uh, we live, I hope so. Let me know how the sound is going. Uh, let me give some shout outs. So Kwame is in the house. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Beauty Stick, appreciate you joining us again. Um, can you guys hear me? Let me know if I need to raise the decibels. So anyway, um, um, so let me know if you can hear me, if you can give me a thumbs up. I'm set up with all kinds of mics and I want to know if it's, I'm coming through uh, and stuff like that. So we can take it from there. Okay, thank you for, for joining us. Sound is good. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you, Royal uh, Kemet. Appreciate it joining as well. So I hope everybody's doing very well. And uh, so far, I know people in the US and the UK uh, that are represented here. And so uh, what I want today is actually also to, to have some of you joining on the discussion. Because remember the last week, we had a great turnout. Um, and it was very, very good. Uh, Mr. Lante, appreciate it joining us. So I want some of you to to come in and share some of your success stories. Uh, uh, you know, when you go to Ghana, how are you making it work uh, for yourself and that kind of stuff? Because we need we need that uh, so we can add that to um, uh, repertoire and stuff like that. So, but I will. Um, so I'll provide a link. Let me put a link here again. So, so the link is down here uh, to to come in. So one of the things I want to talk about is, um, as you can see from the title, you know, how to gain influence and respect within the African communities to give you some takes, some things that I've seen that has worked for me uh, when moving around the countryside with all these projects, uh, going to different regions and how we've been able to have success without uh, any problems um, so far. So it may be we, we are very, very lucky or we are doing a few things right. Okay, so, um, so one of the things too is uh, for for new people moving to Africa or visiting Africa is like you, when you go to new places, you just uh, there's a tendency for people to keep staring at you, uh, just watching you closely, and that's not necessarily a terrible thing. It's not because they feel like uh, uh, they're trying to do something to you. It's just like you know, it's just new. Uh, they haven't seen you before. Uh, you look like you may be from outside, not just outside the community, but sometimes outside the country. And so you become a sense of care to them and stuff like that. So um, that is what it is. You can use that as, as your advantage. So another thing we tend to do is uh, we tend to patronize in all the shops in the, in the community. You know, that allows us to introduce ourselves um, because you rather go and introduce yourself and tell people who you are than for them to have certain minds, uh, especially some negative connotations to who you are. So, so we we patronize all over the shops and, and then make sure that look, uh, uh, we are here to support them as well. Okay, and, and so this because it is your goal to build a credibility, right? Um, and so um, I would say take the lead uh, uh, to to set that relationship to begin that relationship, because the quality of your life, right, is going to determine by the 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 quality of the relationships you have with people in general. So that is going to affect your your mental health and emotional health, right? So you want to you want to do that instead. Um, so be firm, but always be approachable. Um, and then I uh, think one of the things we have to be aware, though, we should be aware that uh, we are not transferring, for those of us, the diasporans that are going back, we are not transferring our insecurities or traumatic experiences from the West. Uh, because I know when I when I live in Brooklyn, for example, you know, when you go to certain places and people start looking at you, you know, it gives you some bad vibes, right? And so it, it kind of gets you prepare for the what ifs and that kind of stuff. So we must make sure that we are like in a different environment and your past experience does mean that you are going to be dealing with the same. In spite of that, still keep your eyes open, but don't be in a way that you are so afraid. Um, you know, Ghana is not there. We don't behave like that, um, that uh, life is in jeopardy and stuff like that. So uh, because I've heard people talk to me about saying the reason they want to go build a community or live in a community in, in, in Ghana 
is because of security reasons. And I said, uh, I, I mean, um, I understand what you're saying, but unless, you know, the, the, the locals or, or the continental Africans are directly targeting the Asperians, then the, that really is a little stretch for me. Uh, you can live anywhere in the country. Uh, I mean, so that is a good thing. And also understand that Africa is a communal society, right? So we don't uh, dwell on a lot of the individualistics attitudes and um, stuff like that. So whatever you are doing, whatever you live, uh, you're part of a community. And so you have to factor in, um, you know, the, the sens sensitivity in that community as well. And so, because look at it, you know, like in Africa, you can see people with the mansions and next to a shack, right? That is how we grew up, um, get a community, and all that stuff are just like new things that have been coming up, you know, the last 10 years or so. So, um, you know, the rich and poor live in the same community, okay? And, and and they make it work. And also lead by example, right? So lead by example um, um, and, and also, uh, you know, treat people how you want to be, you know, treated. Um, you know, go into the community, see what is needed, build, build. And if you are building in the community, our rule is we always hire 20 to 25% of people in the community right you want them to feel like they have a stake in developing that community so so we do that because um they know what is going on they know the history and you want to be put yourself in a situation that they can always come to you and give you information uh that might be needed uh for for you to make adjustment or anything like that so you have to do that so uh and invest you know say invest in a community you know start businesses um over there employing them um you know, um, don't tell them what you think is best for them because they are used to that. You know, the politicians have been telling them all these promises and none of them is delivered. And so the best thing I think you should do, like go there and deliver and you actually win them over um, because that is what they need. Uh, chances are they have an idea what they should do and stuff like that. Granted, it's not being that. So focus, be a doer, right? Be a doer um, instead of like um, just you know tell them everything they need to do. Okay, and so you know build bridges through the social networks, right? So you know promoting the transition of your skills, you know, or maybe if you see somebody is doing something, you can offer them and say, hey, if you took it that way and that kinds of stuff, um, you know that could help that way. They appreciate that kind of stuff. Just get in there and help. Um, let it, let them know you are you are here for them. Encouraging the youth, right? Encouraging the youth is going to go a long way. It's a long way. It's like uh, you can be outside the country and still have eyes on the ground because of all this relationship that you have developed um, over time with people and you maintain uh, and then you maintain these relationships. It's very, very important. And we do that. It's like we went to Kwewu, as you guys saw the project we did in Kwewu a couple of months ago, and we had two guys from Konongo. So they came from Kumasi all the way to Kwewu to work, but we like exactly how they work, uh, their work ethic and quality. So now we have brought them to another project in Accra right now, two projects for them to handle. So we told them, look, uh, we'll bring you here. We'll get, we'll give you accommodations and that kind of stuff. So, and we told them anytime we come to either Kumasi or Kwewu, you are there, we're just gonna you know, bring you onto the team. So all these things matters, right? All these things matter. So it's about building bridges and, uh, and then uh, bringing people on board. And also one thing, so I also want people to understand before I bring the, the next caller in, is that uh, you don't have to give up who you are. You know, I know sometimes it looks like uh, if you are, you know, African-American or Caribbean-American, stuff like that, and you go to Africa and you feel like you have to just, you know, lose yourself. No, I don't think you should do that. What we are saying is that uh, embrace, embrace, take who you are, at least the positive attributes, and then embrace some of the things that you like. You know, attempting to learn the language goes a long way, right? That is the quickest way, you know, you get in and build that community uh, 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 feeling. So, and then, you know, eat some of the food and and and, and that stuff goes, occasionally dress the, the African custom uh, uniform and stuff like that, so attire and stuff like that. So that uh, uh, puts you in because they will protect you, you know, granted, you know, people make it seem like you are going to become a target and stuff like that, you know, as I think sometimes it's overblown. But once you develop that sense of community, the community will rise in and make sure you are not disturbed, okay? So this is a few things, and I want you guys to share some of your success stories 
know what you are doing to to make it work and we'll just vibe on that so um i'm going to bring the next uh caller thanks you for wish waiting uh patiently uh so come on uh the african millennia are you there thank you for joining us hello hi uh thank you for having this show i really like the work that you're doing it's really interesting thank you yeah so on your topic of how to gain influence from the locals i'll just share basically what i did um so i own a tax business in the u.s right so when i went to ghana i thought that okay i'm already well i'm not a big person but i already like i'm a business owner i have all these contacts i thought that okay as soon as i get there you know i can move like that but nope Nobody knows who you are unless you've already established those relationships abroad. You can't expect that as soon as you get there, people are going to be like that. They they know your name and they know what you're up to. You have to socialize with other people over there before they also open up. I was under the impression that I could just do the exact same thing. But I also noticed that in Africa, when it comes to, I'm going to more so talk about business, not really leisure, but when it comes to business, it's very different. It's not an email culture. It's not a Zoom chat culture like it is over here. It's more of a, okay, let's actually go to this event or let's go to the restaurant and talk about it. It's more face to face and I'm going to introduce you to this person and that person and this person and that person. Nobody cares about your website. Nobody cares about all those things. They care about, well, I, I'd say they care about references. They care about who you know and who that other person knows mostly. So it's it's not gonna be a matter of just because you get there, things are gonna change. I wanted to do something with shea butter and cocoa butter and that stuff was all the way in the North. So I had to go all the way over there spend some weeks there, talk to them. And you know those people up there? Their way of life is completely different. They are just so cool and down to earth, but they're also very protective. They're also very protective. So it it took a while for me to stay there and really learn about the natural resources and learn how they actually make the cocoa butter, learn how they make the the black soap and all that kind of stuff. So until I did that, until I actually started to stir <laughs> the, the soap with them, that is when they actually started to see me as one of their own. And yeah, that's just basically what you said. Thank you, thank you. So stay, stay, stay on the background, and then I'll pick you back of that. That is so true because they are used to you know people coming there and telling them all these things uh, uh that they never deliver so they are guarded a little bit um but once i think they find out that you are authentic and stuff like they'll open up they'll open up to you they'll share what they know but you have to go in there and take the lead and and actually earn you know have to earn that that kind of like relationship and so um i think um so i posted a link some of you can join in I think sometimes what people do is um, uh, they think you you can bribe your way into some influence. That will work to a point. That will work to a point, but you got to be probably bribing your way every time. Uh, so that is not a good approach um, to go about it because it's better to like uh, you develop sense of uh, relationship with people, and then that is actually much better than. You feel like you always gotta, you know, uh, grease the palm and all that stuff because um, if that person leaves and another person comes over there, then you gotta be doing the same thing. And so it, it is true. It is true that um, uh, we have to go in there and then earn these things. Um, I don't feel. I feel like I, I can speak on Ghana. Uh, I know that you know we are. No matter where you go, you know the regions. You know people are very welcoming. Um, you know, there's not a hostile place that you can go. But I also feel to how you conduct yourself is going to make your 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 journey a little bit more, you know, like uh, successful. Or it's going to make it a little bit difficult for you. So, and why go there and make it uh, difficult for yourself? So, 
um, go there and invest, invest in this community and be authentic. And then they'll, you know, they, they embrace you and they're gonna help you uh, uh, you know, maneuver and stuff like that. So, and that start with you, you start from all the way from where you live also to uh, in your in your vicinity and stuff like that, what you do over there, uh, how you treat people, how you talk to people um, and stuff like that. So um, it is very, very important. It is really, really important. It's like, I do that all the time. When I go there the next day, you know, I do my, my rounds, you know, let everybody know, hey, I'm here, you know, check up on people, my neighbors, start with my neighbors, you know, let them know, hey, how are you, how's been the year, you know, stuff with that, a little bit for the kids here and there, I move on, go to my spot, get my porridge, you know, go to the store, introduce myself. And they are shocked because, you know, this, hey, Boga, Boga is doing this, you know, but, but it is it is my job to to go and reach out and uh and then and then introduce myself so the letter let everybody know i'm back and anything like that and i just there's a little chat he, you know goes along across the street and go and talk to people and and they they appreciate that um and they appreciate that so so i'm not worried because of that you know i'm not worried in the neighborhood because i need you know i get whatever i need to know and if anything happens people are gonna step up because it's like uh, they see me as one of them and stuff like that. So let me give a shout out to see who's here. The link is out there. Um, let me see who's here. Uh, let's see. Kwame, BBE, Royal Kemi, Joe is here. BB Stick, Mr. Lante, Mr. Bonsu, African Millennia. And then Malay list is here. Then, okay. So do you have more to share? Uh, so, okay. Are you African Malay? A question for you. Are you here or you are you are in any you know, of the African countries? I'm here. Okay. Here meaning the US? Yes, I'm in the US. Okay. Um I would like to move to the US, but definitely not ready at the moment because there's a certain okay. lifestyle that I want. Okay. Okay. And so you are just preparing that for that, right? Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good um and uh, i'm kind of like caught in the same boat um is um i want a certain lifestyle that i'm not willing to negotiate so i'll take my time and and then go at my own time when i'm ready and so um i know sometimes i watch this youtube and it's like man you want to pack and go uh stuff like that but um, um it's just like i'm saying you know what you're not ready yet um because of you know what you you know you want to go there and be able to to do very very well and stuff like that. So it's good. Um, and um, so who else is there? Come in. Anyway, so we talk. So so that is one of the things I want us to really really uh, discuss about. And another thing I want to I want to share with you too is uh, in the line of you know preparation um, and stuff like that. You know we like right now there's a lot of stuff going on social media. But the question becomes used, uh, the question for us is this, um, are you going to be distracted or are you just going to be honing on your goals and then and then check the boxes of what you are trying to do? May I add to that? Go ahead. If you don't mind. Okay. Speaking on the YouTube thing, um, I'll give example to anybody who, this is the only YouTubers I even watched because I had to delete most of them. Uh, there's one called Blacksit, and the reason why I respect them is because they are doing things on a political level. You know what I mean? They're going there and they're trying to change things. They're speaking to ministers and prime ministers about rules and laws. So that whole idea of, I don't see anything wrong with going to Africa to chill, but I mean, to be honest, if you're just going there to eat mangoes and coconuts, Anybody can do that. See, why will a local respect you, right? If if we're peers, like if we're classmates on the same level, I don't have to respect you, right? If anything, mm -hmm. they might respect your money if they know that you have it. But once that's gone, or if that goes away, <laughs> you'll really see the mm -hmm. real way that they think about you. So if you want respect, um, if you want dignification, why don't you talk to people who are on your level? Why don't you talk mm. to the lawyers that are there, the doctors that are there? If you're going to mm. the entertainment industry, talk to artists. If you're trying to do business, talk to people who already own 
great big businesses over there those should be your circle on your call list it shouldn't be quick who who's selling fish in the market like that is somebody you could talk to but that's not somebody you should be hanging out with you know like because if you're hanging out with a street seller like not i mean unless they're your family but if that's your actual friend as in that's your local contact i'm not trying to be mean but that person is doing the best that they can do they're not going to take you anywhere because that is what they are meant to do i don't think you would leave wherever you're going to go to africa to be a seller on the market you could own mm-hmm. the market but would you be the seller on the market i don't think so mm. so you have to also watch out who your entourage or who your your contacts are you should have so, at least one or two people who are doing something that you want to do as well if you're not then i feel like that's a problem that was a lot of good information and as you were speaking on that um you know there were some thoughts running through my head and one of the things is i like to maybe add to that is uh when you get down there there is this expectations and maybe some people don't know there's this expectations that okay i mean from the local uh their expectations that you just came from outside and you are supposed to do great things right great things and so when you sometimes go there and you are kind of like doing the same thing they are doing right they tend to look down upon that because from their eyes they're looking at it like you left you went to you went outside for all these years you came back just to do the stuff that we are doing here so i think that's what you're trying to say right yeah Am I correct okay and so they tend to not value that because they thought they in their eyes it is very demeaning of somebody of your capacity right and so and i think that is what our sister is trying to say is that when you go in there you should be able to do more than the average guy you should be able to do something that is significant uh in your community in the eyes of the locals you know that that brings value but if they are selling mangoes and you go there and put a table and sell mangoes i mean it's just not going to you know it's not there's not the wrong doing that but you're not really going to gain the respect uh um and when you do stuff like that so so i think you got to move a little bit with a higher purpose and also execute at a at a greater level uh because of the what you know what you've experienced um and 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 your world view and your ideas which should be on the macro level uh is something that they don't have yet because what they may see is very limited being in the outside I will give you a lot of exposure if you are applying yourself. Okay? So I think that is very very good. We have so stay on the African Millennia. You're raising some great point. We have uh, we're going to add Anaya out here. Um and then when he's ready Anaya you can join in and stuff. We need more people to come in. So today's about providing solutions, how we can make, how we can go there and have the influence and have the respect. And so when we talk to uh you know our have family on the ground we can we can we can make progress and move forward and and stuff like that so and are you there yeah i'm here um how are you sir can you hear me yes i can hear you okay um um so african millennial raised some very good points um but i just want to touch on so if you're going to sell mangoes just like the locals um there's nothing wrong with it but you have to go in and and ensure that you can produce some uh, good packaging for the mangoes, you know, so so you're not just going to put it on the table uh, side by side and sell it, you know, you're going to be, you're going to uh, separate yourself and, and ensure that you you know some packaging, some good packaging, you know, uh, that can some add value to what you're doing. Um, so so what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is you yourself, yeah, you come from America, you come from the UK, Australia, Germany, and so what? You know, um, you know, Ghanaians, uh, you know, they themselves are very, you know, knowledge, knowledge is increasing. Most people are getting exposed to the to the outside world through the internet, through um, educating themselves. So it's not like before when you go and um, everybody's going to, you know, um, put roll the red carpet for you 
uh, you'll be surprised that uh, people will not do that uh, do that uh, now because uh, they they themselves are very exposed. Um, they do travel. They they know what's going on in the world, and so yeah, you know, and they know what goes on in America. So that um, that respect is not there anymore. So as you guys are saying, you can go and do the same thing. I mean, you brought money, but they know the money will run out. You know, so um, be a leader, uh, not a boss. You know, in what you're doing. Um, you know, be be good at what you're doing, and and don't go uh, um, screaming on people and and try um, and 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 have an expectation that are un unrealistic. You know, uh, one of the things that I would like to say is um, lower your nose. You know, put your nose down. You know, this attitude of, and 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 you would not, you'll probably do it unconsciously. You know, um, because you will tend to complain about everything. You see, that is very counterproductive. You know, and uh, so you will see trash on the road, and you will complain about it. Um, you would, you know, you will see potholes, and you complain about it. Um, you see uh, people hawk us in the street and you will complain about it. Um, you will complain about every service uh, that is not that is not good, especially at the restaurant. Um, the time that your food will arrive this will be like 20 to 40 minutes. You will complain about it. You know, um, you lower your expectations and, and do some research before you go because the culture is different. You know, customer service is not up to par like in the U.S. where you know, they will serve you and smile at you. Um, the person who will, who will serve you in the restaurant in Ghana might not smile at you, um, not because he or she doesn't like you, but really um, she's not a college student who is just doing that at part time. That is full time job. And really the, the pay is not good and life is really hard. So he or she has nothing to smile about, you know, um, he or she has nothing to smile about, whereas in the state, the girl who will serve you is a college student who is just been this part time. She is full of life. She is happy, and you know she knows she's just making some money. Mommy and daddy is taking the care, taking care of her. You know, so um, the dynamics are different. So she will not smile at you, but you know that's her job, and and she will not give you good service. Um, but it's sometimes frustrating, you know, and you will, might you might think uh, you might take offense to that. So you have to lower your expectations. As Tony was saying, everybody would like to, you know, for you to grease your palm. And it's kind of like the culture. So you probably think, oh, this culture is very corrupt. Um, but it's like, okay, it's like if somebody, well, this, this is how I see it. If somebody, you know, does a favor to you, you, you probably give them maybe two CDs or three CDs here and there. That, that, op that builds relationships. I mean, that builds relationship. It's not bribery. It's not corruption. It's not. It's not. It's nothing wrong with, you know, giving somebody three CDs if they helped you do something. You know, I mean, it tends to it tends to get expensive, but I mean, that is how you build relationships. You know, you go and see a chief about some land somewhere. You know, the fine time sits with you and talk to you. When you're leaving, you don't just leave. I mean, here you would just get up and go, but when you get up and leave. You've not built any relationship, but when you give, let's say, 20 CDs or 50 CDs, which to you, an American or somebody from the UK, is nothing. You know, you build a relationship right there. The next time you call him, or you call him or her, he's going to answer you. So, um, those are ways that you can actually make your uh, your trip or your your move um, a little bit easier uh, for you for yourself. And I, let me add one more thing. So one of the things too um, we have found success in is um, you know how to deal with people that may be, uh, especially like for example, um, if when you know when I went to my neighbor when I moved to my neighborhood, there's a couple of guys that you know I heard some bad things about them. And so I approached them quietly and then you see, I told them like, look, you know, these are some of the things. So, um, you know, I will hope, you know, we don't have to go at it and that kinds of stuff. And, and so I think that uh, when 
instead of like going publicly and maybe chastising people and stuff like that. I think uh, even with our workers, sometimes when you do something, we, we put them, we could just yell at them and everybody sees that. But I don't think it's a good way to handle things. You know, we just pull them aside and say, look, you know, you know, when you bring you here, this is the expectation. So this thing's not going to happen again. And and so in that way, they save face and you give an opportunity to correct it. Um, so I feel like, you know, sometimes maybe people think like you have to be aggressive and dominant uh, to get results. Uh, usually that approach is more like insecurity and that kind of stuff. You can be measured and effective and be direct and be firm and be respectful and get a message across. And so uh, that goes a better way than letting everybody know that this guy did something and then it's like you you are in charge and, and running them to the ground. Uh, because when you start doing that, you, it looks like you're a bully um, and, and, and so it doesn't look well. So pull people aside, talk to them, say, you know, and then, and then, and then they, you get better results. You get better results. But yes, it's true. What Anaya said is, is that uh, it's customary, you know, people do stuff for you. I always tip, you know, I tip them all, um, you know, five, five, 10, 20 CDs is not a lot um, and stuff for like that because the, what you get back is uh, more valuable and stuff like that. And so most locals will not tip. So when you do that, you kind of like stand out. Uh, and so put put money in the budget for that. And so when you call people, that's, that's how I'm able to get a lot of things done because it's like, um, you know, I just call them and they'll pick up. I call people 2 a.m. they'll pick up because they know, look, uh, you know, it's like, you know, we take care of them. And so when we need them, it's like they, they're gonna rise to the occasion. Okay, so this is open for anybody uh, to to chime in, African millennial, you can talk, and I uh, go ahead. Yeah. You guys have anything to say? Well, uh, what I'm going to say is that uh, so make people feel important. Um, uh, you know, instead of there's this tendency for you to always think that you came from somewhere, so you're you know better than somebody um you you african millennial mentioned um she had an idea about the business and then when she got there um it wasn't as if it wasn't what she thought it was and so it, you have to be open to different opinions and um and different advice and different worldview um so, and so the the guy who uh the fish sell on the market you know can be some ideas you know sometimes the bigger idea the big ideas will not come from the, the, you know the parliamentarians or the lawyers or the teachers or anything like that it's just the it's just the local people uh, who will give you the ideas and as i said uh, you you add value to they what they are doing and when you add value to somebody over there it opens a whole new world for you because you have the resources and you have the capital and you have the money and you have the knowledge now you can you can uh, you know join forces together and improve upon a product or a service you know which is in turn going to make you know higher profits i mean so we see a lot of coconuts on the streets you know um i you know i've, I've been looking into what what to do with the uh, the coconut, the uh, the waste that we throw away every day. Where, where do those things go? I mean, other countries make all kinds of products with those, you know. Um, you know, so there is, you you have to be able to, you know, empower people and talk to people, uh, come to their level, you know, um, lower, lower yourself, humble yourself, because there is that, Really, there's that tendency that there's that temptation for all always, you know, for you to think that you or have that kind of idea, that kind of mindset that your ideas are better than, other than um, better than uh, somebody's idea because they're in third world country, and it's not like that, you know, you know. So uh, I think that we should pay attention to the, uh, those things. See, another thing is, so most people who will go 
um, first of all, you're going because of you. You know, I, I think that when you you go when you're going with that kind of mind, I think you would be able to be free. Go because of you. Don't go because you're going to go save or clean the city or save the continent. You're not, you're not going to do it in your lifetime, you know. And so, go because of you. You. What are the reasons why you're moving? Have A, B, C. These are the reasons why I'm leaving. As, as I said, as 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 we all agree. So you know you're not ready to move. You don't just move. So you are leaving because you're running away. No, sorry, that's you're leaving racism behind. You want some kind of freedom in your life? You know, go and achieve those goals. Make sure you're comfortable. Um, and please take away. And I, yeah, I think we've had this several times. Take away the Messiah mindset. You're not going to save anything. You can do just a little bit. You know, you're not going to solve the sewage situation. The situation. You're not going to solve the sanitation situation. You, you can do just a little bit. You know, you're not going to educate the whole community as to how to think about racism or colonialism or um, uh, uh, you're not going to be able to do that. You will be able to educate a few people around you and to change the way they think. You know, so please take care of yourself. You know, make sure you're sound. You, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to save Africa. No, it's going to be, it's going to take a long time for what we are fighting for, for us to get what we are fighting for. Um, you know, I hear people complain about um, price tackling um, and um, people um, charging more money because they just simply see them coming from America or the UK or from the West. So they charge them triple, uh, triple the price. You know, you're not going to be able to change that overnight, you know, but you can change a few people around you and to tell them, hey, listen, the fact that I'm coming from the West, I didn't mean you should charge me more. You know, and as I tell, I tell people, when they're charging you more, divide the price into three and start negotiating um, from that level. You know, so um, let me just sum it up and say, you're not going to be able to save the world. Go because of you. Focus on what the goals that you have set for yourself. And when you achieve those goals, you realize that if it's business that you're in, you would be able to solve a little bit of problems maybe with a pro with the business that you're in you know and a few people around you you will achieve some goals if you go with that messiah mindset uh you will find yourself very frustrated african uh, african millennia you have something to add yeah oh i agree with what nana Yao said and even in the beginning uh he was talking about being humble and he was basically saying, yeah, if you see somebody on the street, right, you can change that person's life by not, not, not treating them the way that everybody else does. So if you treat them with respect and you give them a good tip and possibly if you're able to help them, like give them advice, or partner with them on something that you see as a problem with what they're doing, that can be very impactful. Um, for instance, if you see somebody on the street, and I mean, it's hard to, to see somebody's character, but if you can see someone's character and it's a character that you, you can trust and build a relationship with, that is, that is you doing something impactful for that person and if that can carry on and if that can keep being a cycle where they also are in a position in the future to change someone else's life i feel like that is so much better than looking down upon them um and i do agree again with what nanayal said you should have a separate reason as to why you want to go there it really shouldn't have anything to do with anybody else. You know, um, I've noticed some people's reasons is it's very superficial. Um, 
that whole running away from slavery thing, um, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but when you say you're running away, that's what you're doing. You're running away. You're not, you're not being led. You're not like when you're running away in a haste, you don't have time to prepare. You don't have time to research. And that's what I'm seeing. A lot of people are not doing research. Um, for instance, if anyone is thinking about going to Ghana, Ghana is a wonderful place to go to. And I'm being biased because <laughs> I'm being biased because I have family in Ghana, but that it doesn't mean that that has to be your place. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't look around and look at other markets as well. There are so many other countries as well on the continent. If we're even just talking about land alone, Ghana's not that cheap in terms of land. And yes, there are more places than Accra, East Legon, Airport City, but even beyond that, Ghana is not the cheapest place to get land. And if you're even thinking about certain businesses, there are other West African countries that you could also start doing that in. So really do the research because that's why it's there. The research is not going on YouTube looking at somebody vlogging. The research is actually looking at the markets, looking at the real estate, looking at the rent, looking at the president, you know, looking at the politics of that country. Can you survive with your mindset in that country? How about the water system? Like West Africa, I'm biased against West Africa, but I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that West Africa's in infrastructure is amazing. It's getting there. We're working on it. But if you're looking solely for infrastructure, it's not West Africa. It's East Africa and South Africa, if you're just looking at that. So you have to do your research. And enough people are, I don't know what's going on, but people are really not doing the research. I don't know. Let okay. me add. Uh, so uh, no, go ahead. So let's let's talk about Ghana since you you said you you bias because uh, your family's from Ghana. Now it's very important to pay attention to the politics of the country that you're going in, and I'm I'm from Ghana too, so I, I can speak to that. Uh, listen, I I wouldn't want to move to a country where I wouldn't be able to speak freely. I wouldn't be able to I I wouldn't be able to express myself. So I'm not going to mention names, but so there are some countries which are who are very, uh, very you know, which which are very beautiful and uh, doing very well, but it's just one man running that country, you know. And you ask yourself, when that man dies, how will you know what will happen to that country? Okay, um, let's look at what's going on in Nigeria, you know. Um, let's look at what goes on going on in Cameroon. You know, and Congo, and um, all the some of, some of these French countries. So when you're choosing, it is very important to choose very well. You know, and I can tell you, uh, when it comes to uh, the freedom, of, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of expression, um, your your freedoms, all your freedoms, your freedom of religion, um, business. Um, Ghana is the place to go. That and 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 that is a fact. You know, um, I hear people talking down to Ghana. Why is everybody going to Ghana? That's the reason. It's it's, it's you know, embrace democracy, and we are ahead of a lot, a lot of other countries. Okay, it's an English speaking country, so it appeals to people who are coming from English speaking countries. Um, so there is a lot to do in Ghana, and you're talking about land being expensive, which I agree in Accra. Land in a is expensive. Get out of a You would, you would, you will find out there. You will find out that there's a whole new world out there. You know, in terms of land, the cost of land, the beauty, the greenery, the scenery, hills and mountains, um, lakes. You know, beautiful lakes. You know, the people, the real people. You know, um, the culture. You know. So there is more to Ghana than just Accra. I mean, of course, that's where you land, but get out. You know, you you get out, and there are other towns and villages that you know you will pay a fraction uh, for land. And people have done that. There's a lot of African Americans and people from the diaspora, Jamaica, who have done that. You don't have to live in Accra. 
if if your budget is not going to be you're not going to be able to buy a, a thirty thirty thousand uh, dollar land you know uh, or fifteen thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars if you cannot you don't want to pay that for land get out of a car a thousand dollars in some a, a town in the eastern region or you know central region or you know talk to people you know it, it's not that expensive as you think you know so let's look at the uh, um, you, you know let's look at the totality of the country and let's also do enough research enough research uh, before we 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 move um, you know all right uh, somebody else can talk okay I have uh, Judy. Judy, I'm going to bring you on and then for 41K a month, okay? Are you there, Judy? Yes, I'm here. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. I apologize for um, <clears throat> for being late. Um, I had a long night <laughs> working as usual. Yes, I was listening to um, everyone um, on the panel today. And, you know, let me just say this. Um, you know, Tony, you talked about, you know, going to the continent, especially going to Ghana and not um, socializing with the natives. Socializing with the natives is very, very important, okay? Um, because we need it and also the native need us in a certain way, especially when we speak the language. If we're going there to build communities, we must, it's mandatory that we interact with the natives. Um, a lot of people here on this side of the world, we don't have people skills. And the people that don't, who are planning on going to the continent and say, okay, I'm gonna build my community, I'm gonna put up a gate, a gated community. They don't have any people skills. That's why they're doing that, okay? Um, you must have some type of people skills when you go to the continent to deal with the continental Africans, okay? You are taking the idea of this segregation and taking it to the continent to segregate yourself from the continental Africans, and that is not going to work. That's not going to work at all, okay? Um, so, you know, that idea, taking it to the continent, you can't take the, the you know, what we go through here in the West and the way the West is set up and take it over to the continent is not going to work. I hear some people said some time ago that they're going to go to Ghana and they're going to march because of some something with the police um, in the airport. And I said, you know what? May God be with you. Go ahead and go to Ghana and march because I sure won't be marching in Ghana. We're taking all of the bad behaviors. We're taking the way how our mindset to the continent. Okay. And we're taking it there and it's just not going to work. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the government because that is something that's gonna take uh, a long time to fix if there are issues with the government. I'm just talking about the community. Um, we have to be able to communicate with the natives um, and in order to go there to build a community, even to even live in the community. There's no way you can go there and segregate yourself because segregation is not going to work at all. That's all I have to say, it's not gonna work. Okay, thanks. Thanks, man. Judy, stay there. I'll remove you because it tends to echo. I'll add a few things, then I'll bring a 41K. And it's important. Yes, the community is very, very important because it's, um, it is going to determine a lot of your happiness, okay? And so getting down there and start building that relationship is very, very important. You know, uh, if there's one thing that you can do to feel like, okay, you feel real at home, will be that. And so the good thing is that you're already going to a place that naturally they really want you there, right? They really want you there. There's a difference between going to a location that there's some hesitance, right? But they really want you there. They want to get to know you and stuff like that. So you take advantage and reach out and then uh, build our relationship. So for you, uh, 1K a month, uh, bringing you on. Uh, can you hear us? Okay. I can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I like to say a couple of things uh, in regards to, number one, it talks about the community. Um, 
I always say one thing: African Americans that come to Ghana, I, I give you, I give them a lot of respect because honestly, I'm a Guyan. If I wasn't from Ghana, I would never go to Ghana. Like I would never go there. To this day, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, like I said, I'm a Guyan. But you would never say, oh, "I'm gonna go to Nigeria. I'm gonna go to South Africa." The only place I go to Africa is Ghana because that's where I'm from. And that's the only reason why I go there. And I, I think that we have to give them some leeway and give them like time to adjust because it's like telling someone to go from a whole type of lifestyle from the West to our our lifestyle is totally different. Even when I go there, and I, I'm Guyan, and dealing with the culture sometimes, it gets me a little annoyed because, as you know, Guyan see, even like if you're 20 years old, 29 years old, you're still treated as a child and there's things that you can't do or can't say, or you can't say how you feel all the time. And every guy in knows what I'm trying to say, you know. The second thing is when it comes to land in Accra, you can find land in Accra for 6,000, 5,000. Land in Accra are all not $30,000. Let's be honest here. There's places you can go that are cheaper. If you want to live in central Accra, then yes, you will pay the premium. But let's not act like Ghana's land is the most expensive land in the whole West Africa or Africa. If you go to Kenya, you go to Nigeria, all over, there's way more places that their lands are way more expensive and they get less than what we get, like 70 by 100. Some people cut that in half, like 80 by 90, and they're paying triple the price. So I, I disagree with the whole notion that Ghana's land is expensive. Um, I think that what it comes down to is that your bargaining skills and what you're getting from the location, you know? Obviously, if you want to live by the prime minister, like MPs and stuff like that, then you're going to pay that premium. But you should keep that in mind. Um, also, like Nani, I'll say, we all don't have to live in Accra. You know what I'm saying? Most of us come go to our hometowns or go to outside to Kumasi or something like that. So I really think that people need to really understand that Ghana is not just Accra and that you can live free without living inside the big city. Like I think a lot of people want to live in the city life, but you don't have to do that. You can live in Abri, you can live in Mon Monfi. There's so many places you can go to Eastern region, Western region, Central region. So I really think that people need to explore before they make a decision where they're going to stay. And I think that's the biggest like problem most people have because most of the videos they see are all in one location in Accra. So everyone wants to get Accra, Accra, Accra. I had that same no, um, feeling too, and I kind of made a mistake. And now I'm looking out, okay, I can go to other places where I can get better location, more land, and be more free and less less expensive. So I think they have, I think everyone should do that. The second thing, oh, the third thing I have to say is that saving Africa is not realistic. Like, I don't understand how anyone, either African American or a Ghanaian, can say that they can save Africa. It's not gonna happen. It's gonna take a long, long time. The way you can save Africa is doing your part by building infrastructure, like you building your building, you building your businesses, it's all adding up to helping the economy grow. So I think everyone needs to worry about themselves and make sure they have their mask on, like they tell you on the plane before you try to put someone else's masks on. So like everyone needs to do what they can do instead of worrying about everyone else. I'm sorry to say that, but in Ghana, like even our, our family members, we know this, everyone was, is doing home, doing home, you know what I'm saying? Basically say, worry about yourself. We're not worried about everyone else because we can only take care of what we can see in front of us. And that's all I have to say. Good point. Good point. I know even a community 25, you could get five, six grand, right? For land? Yeah, for land. Yeah. Okay. Prom, prom, like community 25, you got a, a book will be that's right by Medina. You can go to a yard file to play something. There's so many places you can go. Um, it's just up to you to look and discover. And there's people that sometimes a lot of Guyans, like, will say, like, they need to sell their land right away. So they'll sell it for cheap because they need to go somewhere right away. Like, you can get deals because it's just like every given day, someone may, it may be a death in their family or they may need to, like, go to the hospital and they're willing to sell their lands off. So it's not like it's a set price and it's all about no negotiation. And if you have the money in front of you, Money talks, man. They're not gonna walk away from money. So let's be honest here. That's that's the only thing I'll say about that. Okay. Yeah. And then I, yeah, wait. Let me okay, unless you want to respond squid. I want to bring another caller. Just so the just the part of uh okay, so the six thousand dollar land and the three thousand dollar land, five thousand dollar land. 
the problem with those land sets is you that's why you start running into the the scamming you know because if he's already sell, sold the land for somebody for ten thousand dollars you know and then he can he can sell it to you for three thousand i mean he knows the land is already sold you know so when you when you start hearing price that's that sounds so good uh that is when you should be very careful you know, uh, because uh, I'm talking from experience and I, I know what I'm saying. I mean, uh, sometimes it sounds really good and you're so happy because you have the money. <laughs> but that's when the the web is you know, and you start running into problems. But I'm not saying I'm not saying that they don't have land that is that is affordable. They are lands that are affordable, but be very careful when it sounds so good and the location is so good. Uh, you better be careful. Yeah, but I'll like to respond real quick before you add the caller. But like, sure. okay, look, look, who's really gonna be scamming for four, five thousand city land? Most of the land that be scamming are the ones that are high prices. The one at East Lagoon, for example, I would never buy a plot East Lagoon. I stay away from my jigging up. I, I my family members own a lot of land there, but there's so much litigation there that you buy a land East Lagoon, you're gonna go to court. Let's be real here. But if I go to Dodawa or OUB, where the land is a bunch of land out there. And you do your checks and everything. No one really trying to scam you five thousand CDs. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, you're saying five thousand CDs or five thousand dollars? No, you can't get land for five thousand CDs. Three times. Don't know why you still can. At OUB, you get some. No, like five thousand CDs or or dollars. No so, CDs, CDs. Like five, five mm -hmm. ten thousand CDs. It's a little bit outside of Accra, but Dodawa area, like around well, like a thousand dollars. So I kind of agree, you know. Maybe if it's way out there, yeah, you can get it for thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, you can, you yeah. can, uh, uh, yeah. So you got to go way out there with probably there'll be nothing over there, though. No road, no electricity, right? Mm -hmm. None of that stuff. So you have to. Do you want to be the the one person who got his land and he like in the middle of somewhere? But um, yeah, go ahead. But you got to time out before Eastern Gun was Eastern Gun. My family was there before they was there. It was nothing there. They're like one of the first people there. It was empty. There was no roads or anything. So for a community to build, someone has to go there to start it off. So yeah, I wouldn't look I, at it like that way. If I'm going to buy land, I'm going to buy land because I'm like, okay, it's going to grow to something else. No one knew that East Lagoon Hills, East Lagoon would be East Lagoon. It just happened to have it happened to be that way. So you, you're just taking a chance. Oh yes, like you're not like obviously if you wait for ten years for it to develop, you're going to pay triple the price. But sometimes if you take that chance, you can get lucky. You could be get lucked out. And get a good location and not know what's going to happen. We, we can't tell the future or predict what's going to happen in that area. Great point. Great point. Let me add uh, the next caller in, please. Um, Global Green Book, can you hear us? Greetings, family. Greetings. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, great, great, great. I was listening. Is this? I just want to make sure I'm clear because I was jumping on and off. Is this specifically for um, a topic in regards to repatriation to Ghana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sort of. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, 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 because I was curious because, you know, I'm looking into different areas. I have been into Ghana um, and I have been into um, uh, Ethiopia as well. Um, I know my first repatriation journey I was looking at Ethiopia and I went there and stayed for a month just to, you know, see how the thing is. And what I, I suggest for all repats, you definitely, I I'm seeing so many repats who are going to these countries and never visited, never much less even probably been out the country and they're jumping over to Africa. And I know from experience when I was going to move with my small children, I realized I had to come back and rethink it and come up with a plan. Life did get in the way. So my all my children are adults now. And I'm act actively working on my exit plan. I'm not sure exactly if I want to go to Ghana or another country, because I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the best suit for me um, as far as business is concerned. But to just go out and run into a country and never been there, it's going to be a real culture shock for a lot of us born in the diasporas because a lot of YouTubers, you know, they show such, you know, they show the more of the touristy side of Africa. 
And if you're going to visit, that's perfect. But to go live, to live there is something totally, totally different, you know. And it's a great experience because I know when I was um, staying in Ethiopia, I when once I had to like cook my meals and you know, I caught the local transportation. I really was able to see what it would cost for me to live to to live there and to thrive, but I didn't have a plan. And you definitely, definitely need a plan before you come back to Africa. But um, I just wanted to jump in and say that little bit. And um, I'm enjoying the conversation that you guys are having. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, stay in the backdrop. Um, and so one of the things, you know, I like to add is, um, like our sister just said, preparation, right? And there's nothing wrong. And I've said this before. There's nothing wrong if, if you go and it doesn't work and you come back, got to regroup. There's nothing wrong. There's, there's always room for that. Um, and so I think what sometimes people get themselves caught up in is like, maybe they have a YouTube channel and then it's a death to America, death to UK. And then they go there and then things don't work, you know, and then they are caught up between if I come back, my subscribers are going to laugh at me and that kind of stuff. So then it's like, oh, you see your life, plan your life how you want to live it. Okay. And so you shouldn't have any group or anybody hold you hostage uh, on what you are going to be doing with your life. Um, so um, if you need to come back, you need to come back and regroup. But the community, like we said, the community aspect is very, very important. And and you can only you can't beat a community from outside. Okay. You gotta be on the ground. Okay, you gotta be on the ground and then work, work with the people that uh, are on the ground and stuff like that. So, like I said, Africa is for everyone. You can you can whatever your dream is, you can accomplish it as long as you're willing, you prepare way, willing to do uh what it takes uh to to make it happen. But you definitely are going to have these challenges and stuff. I know we divert a little bit to the land issue and stuff like that, but it's all about doing your homework and you have to decide where exactly where you want to live. Um, not everybody's built for city life, like, you know, um, and stuff like that. Yes, there's benefit of living in a, a crowd, but also, you know, you know, there's, there's other areas that will just give you the quality of life. Um, the environment to feel like you have space uh, and that kind of stuff. So don't don't be uh, scared to regroup. Uh, and if that means your subscribers are going to laugh at you, then you know so be it. But um, you plan your life accordingly. Okay. Uh, so uh, just to just to add to, um, well, for you said something about if he wasn't from Ghana, he would never ever think about going there so he do, he does re, he does command the uh, african americans who make that move um so i i kind of agree um on, on on that level but i just want to add that it's important for us to all of us as africans to look at the history and what has been done to us and you know and sometimes what we ourselves have inflicted upon us ourselves to our leadership and to be aware that we we consciously have to make the effort to see Africa as viable. Uh, we consciously, we have to make it the effort to see Africa as viable. So if you're a husband um, and you have your African family back in the States, back in the UK, Germany, Australia, you need to start talking Africa to your family, you know, talk to your children, take them back home, you know, see Africa as viable because what has happened to us, we don't see Africa as viable, but other groups see Africa as viable. That is the bottom line, you know? So then, so then it's like, oh, I will never go live there. Oh, I will go there and um, I probably will not survive. But other people go there and they survive. We have Lebanese, a huge Lebanese community in Ghana who are into business, who are into hotels, restaurants, they're into industry, they're into construction. These people have lived in Ghana over 40 years. 
They've married Ghanaians, have babies with them. They are Ghanaians, okay, who own big, big time businesses. Go to Royal La Palm, um, uh, six star hotels, you know. Um, so, so what's wrong with us? And this whole idea that you think you cannot make it there, you think it's so hard, you know. Um, we have Chinese who live in Africa, you know. So, whatever it is that makes us think that Africa is not viable. We need to talk to ourselves. We need to stop. We need to see beyond the trash, see beyond the potholes, see beyond the the poor, uh, the uh, uh, substandard healthcare or substandard education. Especially those of us with a little bit of resources, we need to join hands together with uh, and and as a community, start building what we, we what we expect. If you want a good school, if you want a good a good hospital. Um, you have friends who are doctors, you have friends who are nurses. Can you build a clinic? I, I believe when you put your monies together, you can build a small clinic. You know, can you build a small emergency room? I believe you can do so. Can you I believe you can build a school? I believe you can build some paved roads in your own neighborhood. You know, it is it is very vital that we see Africa as viable and and change that mindset because that is the only place we have. Wherever you go, you're not gonna be accepted. Wherever we go, we are not accepted. That is the bottom line. Look at what happened when uh, there was COVID. Look at what happened in China. You know, Africans were being dra uh, dragged from their houses, just only Africans, only Africans. Among the, 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 the race, races that are in, 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 in all the races that are in China, only Africans were being dragged out of their homes onto the street and being told that they brought COVID to, uh, to China. Okay, so can we start talking to ourselves? Can we start talking to our parents, uh, our, our wives, our children, our friends? Let's go back home and build. It is not going to be easy, but we can do it. Let's start seeing Africa as viable. Uh, uh, I like to say something, what are you saying? Um, I agree with everything you're saying, and, uh, and you could make a lot of good um, observations and uh, opinions that I, I, I agree totally partly with you. What I was saying was is that if I wasn't Ghanaian, I would have no business to go to Ghana. That's what I'm trying to say. That's all I mean. I have no community ties to come there. So the chance of me going to Ghana would probably be something nothing if it wasn't for someone inviting me there or for me to have something, some doing to be in Ghana. And that's what I think you misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's like investing in Ghana is useless or it's no, I, there's no um, chance of being lucrative or I don't see Ghana as being a prosperity place. That's not that's not the case. Is that I'm just saying from my from how I was growing up, if I wasn't Ghanaian, I, I probably would not even think about going to Ghana. It's just it's because I'm not, I wasn't I, I was never introduced to it. Like it's like for example, if you don't if you like say when you go to college, and you don't know what you want to do until you actually get some kind of course or you get like a one of these courses where like elective, you don't, you don't really know what you want to do until you actually see what's going on, you know? So that's what I'll try on. That's what I'll try to explain. Okay. And, I, I, and I do agree with you. I, I was trying to build up on what you were saying because see, I, I have friends who are from Ghana who, when you're talking to Ghana to them, when you mention Ghana, they all like, you know, French is like, you don't want to hear it, so I, I I totally understand what you're saying, you know. So I wasn't I wasn't actually disagree with you. Uh, it's kind of a natural thing to think, you know, uh, especially when you you think you got out of Ghana and it's like somebody's telling you to go back. It's like okay, what are, what are you trying to tell me? So, um, you know, I I I I, I wasn't trying to disagree with you or anything like that. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not saying you're disagreeing. I'm just saying like I I just want to be clear because like maybe somebody may think something else. Just to be clarified, but yeah. what, what I was what I will say is that um, I I think that it's it's a uh, it's it's up to everyone to figure out what they want to do in life. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's going everyone's going to Africa or wherever they want to go for a reason. I think everyone moves for a reason. The Lebanese moved to Africa it wasn't for they just want to move to Africa because they like Africa. They moved there because of business. Let's be yeah. honest here. When China comes to Africa or Indians or India or people from India. They're not coming there because they want to come hang out. No, like they have families back home. They come here because they want to make money. 
they come in because they see something they want to do. They have uh, something to do there. So I think that if people are coming back to Africa, let it be that you got something to do. I understand you want to live there, but like, why not try to like do something? Or like, I, I don't see how I could go back to Ghana and just go there, just go there and not have something to do there. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, so we're going to add Judy back on, then we're going to wrap it up with the final thoughts, okay? Solutions, how we can make this thing work, okay? Okay. So Judy, Judy, do you have any comment? Yeah. Um, yes, um, this is very interesting. Um, my, my take on that, um, based on what the young man said about um, going back to Ghana, I can tell you this, that um, the people in the West Indies, um, majority of them who have... Um, migrated to, um, to the continent, especially Ghana, um, those people know that they are African. They know why they want to go back there. I'm going to say about maybe, um, I, I could say 80% of them migrated to the continent, Ghana, not because they want to make money. They go back there because they said, look, you know, my ancestors were taken from there. And they're my lineage, that's where my lineage is from. And they go there and they integrate in the community very well. You don't hear any problems from them. Um, they get along very well with the natives there in their community um, because they have the mindset that they have is to, and they always speak about going back. They know that Africa is their home. And, um, you know, the, the late great Bob Marley sang about, you know, Africa, Peter Tosh, all those great men sang about Africa because Africa, you have to see Africa first as our home. If you don't see Africa as, our, as your home first and foremost, you, will, you won't have a desire to go back there because if you live in the West and what they taught you and the images that they show you of Africa, that alone will just totally change your mindset. You know, but if you know for sure that, you know, that's home, that's where your lineage lies, you're going to go there and you're going to make something of yourself, you're going to make something of your community because you know that's where you belong. Um, again, the people from the West Indies get along very fine with the Native. They have no problem whatsoever. They integrate with them and everything is hunky-dory, no problem whatsoever. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, it depends, you know, to each his own. To each his own. If someone says, no, Africa is not for me, hey, then Africa is not for them. You have to know that. You have to feel it in your heart. you got to feel it in your soul to know that, you know, that's where you belong. And once you, once you have that feeling, you know, you, you know, no one can tell you differently. So that's my, that's my take on it. I, like, you know, Africa is not for everyone. It is not for every black person at all. It is not. Um, you know, and the viability um, you know, as Dana said, you know, you know, Africa is viable, yes, but it's not viable to everyone at all. They don't, they don't, they don't see it that way. Um, you know, so it's only the people that have that feel that they have that ties, that spiritual ties to the continent is going to go there. They're going to make something of themselves, and they're going to make something especially for their community. Um, but if someone is just going there to see, okay, lots of resources, I'm going to make a lot of money. This is what I'm going to do. It's, it's, those are the people that's not going to go there and really, you know, make it. They're not. Because they're just going there for the financial reasons. They don't have a spiritual tie to the continent. Mm -hmm. That's my Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. So I got to remove so it because it's going to echo. But Make it quick before we yeah, yeah. All bring up again. I agree with, with Judy what she's saying, and everything and like this, the tie and everything. But honestly, I know a lot of Guyanese that are not going back to Ghana because, like, it's because of financial reasons. You know what I'm saying? You have all the ties in the world to a place, but if you can't live like comfortable. Like, who wants to live uncomfortable? Like, I understand. I see some African Americans that go there, they, have, they don't have anything going, like, they don't have a home, a car, a business, a libel, or anything like that. And then just go to like, Africa. I'm just like, I just can't, well, personally, I, I can't do that. I, I can't personally put myself, like, I love my home. I, I want to go there so bad, but if I'm not financially stable and I'm not making money, no matter how much time I have to that place, if you're not feeling comfortable because of financial reasons, you can't stay there. It's not viable. So, you know what I'm saying? So you do have to have a business going on that can help you maintain your living there. 
other than that, it's gonna be nearly impossible to stay anywhere. That's all I'm saying. So I think I think you two are kind of like saying the same thing differently. Like so, basically, people will be pulled differently, right? So some people it will be will be financial. That is why they can't move. And some people, even if their finances are not hundred percent in order, they have this pull that is going to put them um, over there regardless. That means that um, if they have to uh, reduce the quality of life, it is a trade. Uh, it's a trade that they are willing to take because there's this urge. And so I think it's going to be different for everybody. Some people are just going to be all, like what other groups come in this, purely financial. For me, I'm kind of like both. You know, I got a pool to go there and also I want to be um, financially live a, 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 this kind of lifestyle. Now, I would say it's about 70% poor and 30% I have to make sure financially I can live that lifestyle. So, so I understand uh, what you both are saying, which is like, look, you are more saying financially prepared and you say, you know, sometimes you have this pool and then it's that there's nothing you can do but to, to reconnect uh, and stuff like that. So anyway, African millennial, if you have something to say, I'll bring you on and then, uh, then I wrap it and then we call it a day. Sure. Um, so just to end it on off the topic of the way to go to Ghana and to get respect among locals is you don't get respect just for moving to Ghana. You get respect mostly from people who want to move to Ghana and haven't. That's who you get respect from. But when you're actually there on the continent, you don't get respect just because you move there. Nobody cares. You have to earn your respect. And as Nana Yao has said in so many examples, along with Tony, you get respect by uh, dealing with locals. You get respect by making connections. You get respect by humbling yourself. And you get respect by being open. Uh, if you go there and you just stick to yourself, I mean, no one's going to really care about you. No one's really going to want to do anything with you. So, yeah, you just go with an open heart and open mind. And eventually, with time, you will get the respect that you're looking for. Lovely said. And I go ahead. Well, so so uh, I was touch on the vi the, uh, the viability part again. And I, says, and I say to Ofori that um, so if you see if you start seeing africa as viable so let me just go back and say i'm seeing it financial and then freedom financial and freedom two f's so what okay you combine the two okay i'll build a financial base because i want freedom okay now if you feel so free wherever you are in the west you know you, you think you think your children and your 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 descendants are going to be free wherever you are. Then you can keep doing what you're doing. But if you think the freedom aspect is going to be a problem for you and your descendants, then you better start seeing Africa as viable, build a financial base, and go back home. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's that simple. And, it, and then sometimes, and I'm saying, you have to consciously make it. You, nobody can do that for you. You have to consciously make it, you know, because it doesn't. It, it it's it's not. It's not like it's going to be built for you, or somebody is going to, or it's going to be. It's going to be easy for you. It's it's difficult. It's it's hard, you know, to make that transition from here to there. But you have to make that effort. Put that work in, because um, I I I bet you, uh, wherever you are in somebody's country, whether you were born there or not. It's not your home. Okay. So if uh, this was another great episode of, of a good discussions, as you can see, uh, everybody was trying to give you their best in ideas to clarify their statement and support each other. And so to bring it, to wrap everything up that uh, we talked about is, look, Go in there and earn that respect by what you do and your interactions and be, being like a build bridger, right? That is the only way you are going to able to do that. So take the responsibility 
of them, everybody looking at you like you're supposed to do more and just live up to the expectations. Okay, and if you can do that, you can be you can be happy, or you can be productive, and then you can be a person of influence and 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 have the respect uh, from the from the old and the young. And so, um, and that is a great thing. Okay, so thank you very very much, everyone, for tuning in. We appreciate all the comment uh, on the side. Uh, we are still building. There will be some building videos that I'm going to post in the next couple of weeks. Our project is going on, but I feel like we need to get on, uh, get this discussion going on because why live in a mansion when uh, you, you know, you have uh, you're unhappy about certain things. So, so we want you to to have it all, but including the 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 emotional aspect, the mental aspect, and also the lifestyle. Okay, because uh, we don't want a situation in which uh, this, uh, you can you can have a house, the mansion, and still be lonely and still be dissatisfied with life okay i appreciate african millennium 41k a month nanayao judy thank you very much and our sister that spoke global green book i hope i don't miss anybody but thank you for coming in and contributing to this village uh, as we move forward we have no choice but to make forward and uh, and leave a legacy behind thank you i appreciate you thank you very much bye-bye